Back in 2017, Nike started something huge when they had their Breaking 2 event, and that's when they announced the Vaporfly Elite, the Vaporfly 4%, and the Zoomfly. These are their high cushioned carbon plated racers and it really changed the industry. In this episode of Sneaker Genealogy, we are going to be looking from the development and the evolution of the Vaporfly way back from the early prototypes all the way up to the current final hype and what may happen to the shoe in the future. So the Vaporfly first started development back in 2015. Something I learned recently while reading Brian Metzler's Kixology is that some of the earliest prototypes of Nike using a carbon plate were almost like road spikes where they had very little cushioning in the heel and focused on forefoot cushioning. In my head I picture something kind of like the Zumax Dragonfly or New Balance's 5280 Though, as you could imagine, when trying to build a marathon racer, you're going to inevitably heel strike, so that plan was scrapped. One of their next prototypes looked more like a traditional racer, but with a higher stack. Some of these earlier models were called the Mayfly or the 3%. This is the shoe that Galen wore in the 2016 Rio Olympics marathon. The midsole was Zoom X and had a carbon plate. The upper was typically the Streak LT2, but there were some models with the Streak 6 upper as well, and some prototypes with high top flyknit uppers were seen as well. The outsole was a pretty standard rubber waffle-esque pattern for the time, and it wasn't until later in 2016 at the Berlin Marathon that we started seeing the familiar looking midsole with the pointed arrow heel. That's what ended up being pretty close to what released a year later. These arrow heel prototypes mainly consisted of Streak 6 uppers with the occasional Streak LT2 upper and some prototype materials like an early version of Vaporweave. The midsole and outsole of these models didn't seem to change that much from what was actually released to the public. The Vaporfly 4% released at a weight of 6.9 ounces and a stack height of around 31 millimeters to 21 millimeters in the forefoot. This was the first consumer model to have the extremely light and bouncy Piba based Zoomax foam. It balanced the soft foam with a rigid carbon fiber plate. The upper was a thin layer of fly mesh with some light padding in the heel and the outsole was covered with thin rubber in the forefoot and had some patches in the heel. The following year, the Vaporfly 4% got a new version with a redone upper, and this was the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit. As the name suggests, the main difference being the Flyknit upper and the midsole and outsole were identical. The weight remained pretty much the exact same, but provided a more locked down sock-like fit, it was stretchier around the toes and had a more solid heel counter. The consumer level Vaporfly was essentially getting the upper that the Vaporfly Elite from the year before had. Speaking of the Vaporfly Elite, in 2017 when the shoe launched, it was a more cushioned, faster version of the Vaporfly 4% meant for Nike's pro athletes only. It started out with a high top upper, but it also got a low cut version. Earlier prototypes featured the Streak LT2 upper as well while they were still focusing on the midsole development. In 2018, the Vaporfly Elite continued to be a very scarce and virtually impossible shoe to get, but it too got an upper tweak. It got a version with Fly Print, which was a super light and breathable 3 printed upper. 2019 was when the Vaporfly 4% and Vaporfly Elite start to collide. That's because Nike released the Vaporfly Next Percent. This took the extra cushioned Zoomax midsole from the Vaporfly Elite, sculpted it a bit, kept the carbon fiber plate, and added a light water resistant upper called Vaporweave. The Vaporfly Next Percent managed to have 15% more Zoomax foam than the Vaporfly 4% and 4% Flyknit, 
but also lose some weight coming down to around 6.6 .6 or 6.8 ounces with a new stack height of 40 millimeters in the heel and 32 in the forefoot. The outsole also closely resembled the one found on the Vaporfly Elite, but was tweaked with added flex grooves and increased grip. Prototypes of the next percent were called the Vaporfly 5%, and there were some prototypes trying out various uppers, including a different vapor weave design, but most pros used the 5% midsole with the Flyknit upper of the Vaporfly Elite. In 2022, the Vaporfly Next Percent was one of the most popular racing shoes, but many other brands started coming out with their own high cushion carbon plate erasers to compete. So Nike decided to push the boundaries and publicly release the shoe that Kipchoge broke the two hour marathon barrier in, the Alpha Fly Next Percent. So I'll talk about the Alpha Fly's evolution in a separate video, but essentially Nike sold this alongside the Vaporfly Next Percent as a more high cushioned marathon alternative racing shoe. So in 2021, Nike let fans know that they weren't replacing the Vaporfly with the Alpha Fly, but instead released the Vaporfly Next Percent 2. With this model, they kept the same midsole and outsole as the Vaporfly Next Percent, but replaced the Vaporweave upper with a breathable mesh fabric and made the toe box a bit roomier. All right, so that was a lot of information. Let's kind of sum it up in a visual with the kind of family tree slash timeline. So as you can see, a thick slab of foam diverged into the Vaporfly 4% and Vaporfly Elite, but these two branches combined with the Vaporfly Next Percent. Off of there are cousins that share similar DNA like the Alpha Fly and in a way the Streak Fly as well. So we just recently got the Alpha Fly Next Percent 2 from Nike, but I don't think that Nike is done with the Vaporfly Next Percent. I think that we could see a new version of this shoe, but it wouldn't be this year, it would be next year in 2023. And I do think it's due for a big redesign. And I could see them using a similar design language to what they've used in the Alpha Fly Next Percent 2, the Zoom Fly 5, the Peg 39, where they're kind of getting rid of the arrow heel and making it a bit more flat in the back and almost a little more kind of blocky shaped. So I think it's easy to say that the Vaporfly changed the world of marathon racing and is a super influential shoe that may be one of the most well-known shoes or at least one of the most talked about shoes. I really hoped you enjoyed this journey with me going through the genealogy of the Vaporfly. And I do plan on doing some prototype deep dive videos where I go more in depth about some of the specific prototypes you've seen in this video. I already have a couple planned, but definitely let me know which in-depth videos you wanna see in the comments down below. Subscribe so you don't miss any of my upcoming reviews and news, and as always, keep on running.